Sports Beat is brought to you by Ken Garth. We hear you. We're still celebrating. What a night last night in Provo. Thanks for staying up with us. JJ and Sam with you for the next 45 minutes. We'll look back on the Cougars' upset of number two ranked Gonzaga, but not all the news is good around here right now. Yeah, unfortunately not. What's going on with the Utah Jazz? Well, we'll take you into the locker room. We'll get answers from the players, but we're going to start with a big NBA rivalry tonight. Yeah, I was looking forward to this. If you're a longtime fan of the NBA, when you say Lakers and Celtics, it gets your attention. And it brings back memories of some of the most memorable moments in NBA history. Yeah, they only meet twice a year. They're in opposite conferences, of course. So today, one of those moments, though, and there's some added meaning to this matchup. Absolutely. This res is respect right here out of the gate. Boston Celtics legend Bill Russell wearing Kobe's number 24 jersey. This was the play of the game. Rajon Rondo with a special pass to Anthony Davis for the dunk. AD had 32 and 13. Jason Tatum, though, was even better for the Celtics. He had 19 points in the first half. After his team was down nine in the first quarter, he led the Celtics on a run that cut the lead to two at the half. Tatum finished with a career-high 41 points. This is the most points scored in a Lakers-Celtics game by one player. He was 12 of 24 of seven from three. He's taken his game to the next level this season. Let's go to the fourth quarter where things get really good. LeBron stepping up when the Lakers needed him most. A big three with 120 left. The Celtics would respond. Gordon Hayward to Jalen Brown in the corner. Gives the Celtics the lead. Down one with 30 seconds left. The Lakers go to LeBron and he delivers a clutch fade. Tatum couldn't win it for the Celtics. His time expired. Lakers now 43 and 12. The Celtics and Gordon Hayward will be in Salt Lake City on Wednesday. Looking forward to that one. Well, the Timberwolves were taking on the Nuggets at the Pepsi Center in Denver. End of the opening quarter ends like this. A Nuggets steal and buzzer beater by Monte Morris. Denver up five. Play of the game was this. Josh Okogie follows the miss with the one-handed slam. Ties the game at 51. Paul Millsap was the leading scorer today. Three of his 25 put the Nuggets up 83-77. And his clock ran out in the third. Another buzzer beater. Mason Plumley flips it up and in. Nuggets get the win 128-116. Two playoff contenders in the East clash in Toronto, Raptors and Pacers. The Raptors own the Pacers in the North. OG Ananobi with the fancy reverse. Kyle Lowry still the engine that drives that team. 16 points, 11 assists. The Raptors win this game by 46 points. The Pacers have lost 13 straight in Toronto. Ouch. The Oklahoma City Thunder had eight players scoring double figures today against the Spurs. Danilo Gallinari was one of those guys. How about the reverse dunk just before the half? They had a six-point lead at the break. Shea Gilgis Alexander had 22 points and 13 rebounds, though. The Thunder, they roll past the Spurs, 131-103. All-star there. The Blazers trying to fight for that eighth playoff spot in the West. No Damian Lillard as he recovers from a groin injury, no problem. C.J. McCollum had a 41-point double-double. One rebound shy of a triple-double. And give Carmelo Anthony credit. He's been great for the Blazers. He buries the dagger. He had 32 points. Blazers, three games out of eight. 32 from Mello. Wow. Well, Wizards guard Bradley Bill at one up them did something special in Chicago tonight. He was filling up the stat sheet. 15 for 27 shooting, including five three-pointers. 18 for 20 from the free throw line. Beal poured in 53 points for the Wizards, but Zach Levine says you can take your 53 and see yourself out. He and Kobe White combined for 65. The Bulls win 126-117. 53 feels hollow when you lose. Pelicans highlights. Now a must-see with Zion Williamson healthy. He put on a show tonight. First the ankle-breaking step back and buries the three. Now let's dial up a fast break finish from Zion. Worth another look. How about some lob action? His eighth consecutive game with 20 or more points. He had 28.7 boards. Pelicans get closer to that eighth playoff spot. 
Okay, so the first weekend past the All-Star break, we've already got a little bit of shuffling in the Western Conference standings. Unfortunately, the Jazz, they're now in the fifth spot, losing the tiebreaker to Houston. And now the Thunder are nipping at the Jazz heels, just a game and a half behind Utah. All right, what is going on with the Utah Jazz? They come back from the All-Star break with a week's worth of rest and the next five games on their home floor. Instead of coming back recharged and ready to roll, they've looked sluggish and deflated. Back-to-back -back losses against the Spurs and Rockets over at Vivint. So where are things going wrong? What do the Jazz need to do to get out of this funk? The common theme in the two losses was the lack of energy. Over the course of the season, the Jazz are a top 10 team in the NBA in defensive rating. The last two games, they've had the fifth worst defensive rating in the league. And according to Rudy Gobert, the growing co uh, confidence by their opponents has led to a lack of respect on the court. You know, they come out, they, they push us around, they deny us, we don't react, uh, take us out of what we want to do. And, uh, and then offensively, they're just playing free. I mean, uh, uh, John Murray, all these guys, they're playing like, it's like they get, get out of the cage, you know, they can do whatever they want because it's easy. John Murray, Jazz, a timeout. When, they, when you go somewhere and you feel like, you know, it's going to be an easy night for you, then everything is a little easier. And NBA players, no matter who you play, like these guys know how to play, uh, but they're still, uh, a very good, very good organization. We have a lot of talent, and all these guys want to kick our ass to to show that you know they can kick the ass of a of a playoff team and of a good team. Well, the Jazz they also need to tighten things up uh, on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. The last two games, the Jazz have given the ball up twice as many times as they've taken it away. 30 turnovers, just 16 takeaways. Mike Conley was pretty blunt, saying the Jazz just aren't good enough to win if they aren't the aggressors. Get every single loose ball, get every single rebound. Um, that's the kind of mindset we have to have. And you know, we're not good enough to just walk into games and and, and play lackadaisical and take possessions off. And, uh, and and good teams like tonight will beat us. All right, let's change the mood a little bit. Let's switch to college hoops. It was a magical night at the Marriott Center Saturday. BYU knocked off seventh or second rate Gonzaga, ending the Zags 40 game conference win streak. It's not enough to win a conference title, but it sends a message to the nation that BYU will matter in March. So how did they do it? Let's start with Yoli Childs. The Zags feature one of the best front courts in the country. Well, Yoli won that matchup, and it wasn't even close. He had 28 points and 10 rebounds. He was 12 of 19 from the field, also added two steals and a block. BYU also shot the lights out, 53% from the field, 11 of 27 from three, 40%. That'll get it done. T.J. Haas and Jake Toulson combined for 33 points. They were 7 of 15 from 3 combined. The team scored 91 points against the second-ranked team in the country. You could be in this business for, for 50 years and not get that night with all the lead-up that was into it, with the whole year's lead-up and the four years lead-up. You could do that and never get this night. And these guys got it. And so I, I, I don't know about any broader picture things, but that just makes me happy. There's magic that happens in March. And so when you have a lot of momentum and you got some magic going, uh, it's going to be really good for us. And so this is definitely a huge momentum builder for us. And um, it's a great win for us. And um, the thing that this team has done well all year is we take it one game at a time. What a, what a, what a special night. What a, um, for, for everyone involved. I, I feel so happy for everyone that, um, that has been with us through the ups and downs and stuck with us. Um, I think uh, we're all going to remember where we were tonight and, and the feeling that we had in that building. It was the seniors that took advantage of the opportunity on senior night. Yoli, TJ, and Jake were great. We also have to mention senior Zach Celius and his crazy hair. Came off the bench with 12 points and five rebounds. And another key senior, Dalton Nixon, got on the court despite that injury that's keeping him out of action. All of these seniors have had ups and downs at BYU, but their final game at the Marriott Center was the proper send-off. It's unbelievable. I was, I was in the tunnel and I, I started I started tearing up a little bit. And Neil was like, we'll cry after, bro. We'll cry after. And so it's it, it was amazing that is this place is is unbelievable and these fans are incredible and um you know how they showed out tonight was unlike anything i've ever experienced it was fantastic byu <clears throat> bro i said i wouldn't get emotional i gotta relax come on 
like BYU will always be home to me. And I was a little irritated because they were so great tonight that I almost started crying before the game. I'm like, I got to focus on the game. But they were they were amazing all night long. And um, it's so sad that we're not going to be, be able to play out there again. But uh, there's not a, not a group of guys I'd rather do it with. And uh, we really have the best fan base in the country. How about those fans? A shout out to all of you that showed up. The place was packed. It was electric. And you had an impact on the game. The Rock was rewarded for the time spent camping outside for two days, waiting for the best seats. They got to rush the court after one of the best home wins in program history. Sometimes you try and, you know, you try and speak things into existence, and most of the time it doesn't work, and every once in a while it does, and those moments are great. And um, this Rock is amazing. Come on. I mean, is it happening anywhere else in America? Did that happen anywhere else in America this weekend where kids slept out for two nights in 30 degree weather? All right, now to gymnastics. This will come as no surprise, but Utah Gymnastics is great again. Undefeated and ranked third in the nation. They're doing it with just two seniors on the roster. Yeah, and they national are they national title contenders is the question. Sunday's meet in L.A. could give us that answer. A big test against their rival, the UCLA Bruins, both tied third in the national rankings. Here we go. Tom Farden in his first year as the Red Rocks head coach had his gymnast, his, his gymnast ready to go. We start on the bars. Kim Tesson, a native of Orem, one of two seniors, a 9.95 on the bars. She follows that up with a team best score on the vault to a 9.90. The Red Rocks took a slim lead into floor. Sydney Soloski came up big, killing her routine. She's got bounce. She earns a 9.95. The Red Rocks' last competitor on beam, Abby Paulson. How clutch is this? She delivers a perfect 10. The first perfect 10 on beam for the Red Rocks since 2008. Is it enough, though, for the Red Rocks to win? Their reaction as the final score is announced says it all. They win 198 to 1. 98.025, that's close enough. We'll be right back after this. Sports Beat is brought to you by Ken Garth. We hear you. We are back with football in February. The NFL Combine gets underway this week with position workouts starting Thursday night. The state of Utah, well represented. Yeah, nine players from the University of Utah, three from Utah State. It's lining up to be a banner year for locals in the NFL draft. And with so many players participating, it got us thinking, which local player has the most to gain and which has the most to lose? This is what I think. I think the player with the most to gain is Zach Moss. The big names at the Combine at the running back position are DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, and Jonathan Taylor. This is a chance for him to prove head-to-head -head that he can be just as good or better than those big names in the NFL. I think the player the most to lose is Jordan Love. The Utah State quarterback enters the Combine as the third best quarterback in the draft behind Joe Burrow and Tua. But if he has a poor Combine and then scouts start to question how good he is, then doubt creeps in as a G5 quarterback in his lackluster junior year starts to come into focus. Jordan will be under a lot of pressure on Thursday. I want to see how he responds. That's going to be fun to watch. Now, for me, the most to gain, Bradley and I. NFL teams value pass rushers almost as highly as a good quarterback. Pass rushers are seen as franchise guy, a position that you can build your defense on. If he measures well, especially in the speed drills, an eye who's considered a top 10 edge going into the draft could boost himself into the early second round. The most to lose, I agree with you here, JJ, it's Jordan Love, especially in an offseason that is loaded with high quality free agent quarterbacks. Teams may look to the market before they actually look to the draft to fill a void at quarterback. A bad combine could drop Love multiple rounds. XFL action. The Guardians and the Battle Hawks. First, we have history. The first kickoff return for a touchdown in XFL history. It's a reverse. And Joe Powell of the St. Louis Battle Hawks is off to the races, 83 yards for the touchdown. This is the smartest play of the day. St. Louis Battle Hawks player Casey Sales sees that sign of the crowd. He must be hungry because he trades a football for a box of Girl Scout cookies. You know what? I don't blame him. Those Thin Mints, man, those are good. Are outstanding. There's a box waiting for me at home. All right, how about the D.C. Defenders and the L.A. Wildcats? 
Cardell Jones has experienced a resurgence to his career in the XFL, but today didn't go so well. He threw four interceptions, no touchdowns. Now, Norm Chow, the offensive coordinator for the Wildcats, he had his offense rolling. Josh Johnson completed 72% of his passes, 278 yards, three touchdowns. Wildcats thumped the defenders 39-9. Cardell Jones' first loss as a starter, college or pro. All right, who are the Utah Jazz? Are they the team that won 18 of 20 games or the team that has lost seven of their last 11. 56 games into the season, I'm not sure we know. I do know this, the way they played the first two games since the All-Star break can't be their identity. Two teams from Texas came into Salt Lake City and destroyed them on their home floor. It showed one thing they are lacking, a killer mentality. They need to find a higher level of intensity and urgency. If you want to be a, if you want to be a champion, if you want to be one of the best teams in the league, we gotta, it's got to be who we are, and we're going to come on every night with that chip on our shoulder. Every night, no matter who we play, we've got to come out with, a, with something to prove. That's where it needs to be, you know, on us to come out with the mindset of killers. And don't give them anything. Don't let, don't give them, don't let them get, get confidence early in the game. And even if we feel like, we, we're, like we're, great, we're looking good in the rankings and all that, like, we, wanna, we want more than that. How about the running Utes? Their offense has been pretty dormant during their three-game losing streak. Their leading scorer, Timmy Allen, only averaged nine points per game during that stretch. Today at the Huntsman Center, though, something clicked for both of them. Down by one in the first half, Timmy Allen, well, he's going to cut back door, flip up the reverse layup to give the Utes the lead. The Utes only trailed one other time the rest of the game, and Ryland Jones capped the half with this deep three for a six-point lead going into the locker room. USC did go on a 10-0 run to cut the Utes' lead to five with less than four minutes to go. On the next possession, Ryland Jones draws a charge, a play that halted the Trojans' momentum, but also forced Jones to leave the game with an apparent leg injury. He had eight points, four assists, and four steals when he left. Now, you've heard the sports cliche before, next man up. Well, Alfonso Plummer was that man today. He hit some big shots down the stretch and finished the day by chipping in five of eight from three-point range and scored 18 off the bench. Talk about Ben don't break, and he's solid. So uh, I'm happy for him, man. Might be spicy y'all, but we know what he can do. Um, so I've been just working hard, you know, since the beginning, and I was just waiting for my chance. And I, I think, I think it's time. So I just feel uh, proud of what I'm doing. With an eight-point lead and two minutes to play, Timmy Allen carried the Utes to the win. He's going to get the bucket here to put Utah up by 10, 72 to 62. He would knock down another jumper with 22 seconds to go, finishing the game with a game-high 21 points, and the Utes knock off a potential tourney team 79-65. to And it's about scoring points, right? I mean, we got to figure out a way to put the ball in the basket, and I thought Alfonso was big. 19 assists is an indication that we're moving the ball with each other. You just hope that, you know, at some point the rim's going to open up a little bit, and it, and it did tonight. Now back to the Cougars. Yoli Child stunned many by deciding to return for his senior season at BYU. Then the NCAA made a terrible decision to suspend him over nine games for paperwork issues. Then there was a finger injury. All that adversity was worth it, though, especially after that win over Gonzaga in his last game at the Marriott Center. Spencer Linton caught up with one of BYU's all-time greats after the celebration. One of the most memorable wins in Marriott Center history, BYU takes down number two Gonzaga. I'm here with Yoli Childs. Yoli, you lived it. You experienced it. What are the emotions like after uh, you beat Gonzaga and, and experienced this on senior night of all nights? So many emotions. Uh, so many emotions, but, but the overlaying emotion is gratitude. I'm, just, I'm so grateful to, to get to play with these seniors, to get to play with this team, and uh, to get to experience something like that with the best fans in the country. I, I think we showed tonight that this, this is the best crowd in the country. And, uh, it's just so much fun, and I'm going to replay this, this day for the rest of my life. And uh, hopefully we can have more days, even bigger than today. But uh, I'm just trying to live in the moment and, and really appreciate tonight. Uh, I'm just proud of our guys, and I'm so proud of Cougar Nation. Walk us through your experience in the court storm after the game. What was that like for you? For like five seconds, I was like, this is amazing. And then the next like minute, I was like, I might die. <laughs> <laughs> that was hot. I don't know how the fans were sweatier than me. But it was, it was a good time, and uh, it's, it's not something many people get to experience. And it's, it's kind of a storybook ending to, to the career that, that a lot of us have been able to have here. And uh, it, that, was, that was special, and I'll remember that for the rest of my life. 
What did it mean to the seniors to go out this way? I know you've been talking about it, you planned on it, but to execute it, what does that mean to the seniors? Uh, it's amazing, but what's really weird about this team is uh, it's senior night, but it, it didn't feel like it in a way because we just we care so much about each other. It doesn't matter what class you are. It felt like just a big of a night for for Colby and Trevin and and A B and and go down the line, Blaze, all these dudes, and we're just so together that uh, class doesn't matter to us, and we're just a team. And uh, even though it was our last game, the seniors out here on this court for all those guys, it was it was their last time with this group, and uh, it's a really special group, and we're just happy that, that it turned out the way it did. Your coach said, Yoli Childs came back. He said, Jake Toulson came back. And TJ Haas stayed the whole time. You said you wanted to do something special, and that was a big part in your decision to come back to BYU. How close are you to accomplishing something special? Um, I think we've done a lot of special things already, but uh, our, our goals are crazy high and we're really excited and I think this shows tonight what we're capable of and uh, that we're capable of beating any team on any given night. Um, it really helps to have the crowd here but we're really excited because Cougar Nation travels and it's going to be a ton of fun uh, going out on these neutral courts and, and having a great fan base and doing big things. How would you explain the crowd tonight from a player's perspective? Unreal. Unreal. I mean it's a real impact on the game. And I don't know if the fans realize how big of an impact they have, but it's huge. Uh, you see a little bit of hesitation in your opponent's eyes. You see a little bit of fear, a little bit of doubt when uh, when they mess up and the crowd goes crazy. They don't want it to happen again. Um, and uh, it, gets the, it gets opposing teams hesitating. And, and sometimes that's all it takes. How do you keep things going after such an emotional high like this? Uh, we don't get too high, we don't get too low. Uh, tonight was amazing. We've had other nights that have not been amazing. And, and, and we felt a lot of pain and adversity and trials, but uh, we just try to not get too high and not get too low. And our number one goal all season has been get better every day. And I think we got better tonight. And we're going to come in on Monday, get better Monday, get better Tuesday, on and on and on. And uh, as March comes, we'll be a much better team than we were tonight. Now you said something earlier. You mentioned adversity is what shaped this team. It's it's not like the amazing wins per se, but it's the adversity. You got to go through some crappy things to to get here. Um, how do you how do you keep going through those tough times? Like what, what are you telling yourself? I think you have to think with perspective and gratitude. Uh, I'm so grateful for every challenge I faced this year and our team so grateful for every challenge we faced. We're facing challenges now with Dalton being out. Um, and we're going to face more challenges as, as the season progresses, but uh, we kind of look at them as, as blessings. We really do. We look at it as an opportunity to grow as basketball players and as people. And at the end of the day, we love this game, but the challenges that we face and the adversity we face will prepare us for life because uh, as everyone watching this knows, ups and downs don't stop. And I think if you can, if you can try to have joy and gratitude through the downs, then life just gets a whole lot easier. Well, you've beaten Gonzaga in the kennel, and now you've beaten Gonzaga in Provo. Congratulations on uh, an incredible senior night, and we look forward to things to come. Now we just got to beat them on that neutral court. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, that's the next one. All right. BYU takes down Gonzaga in Provo for Sports Beat Sunday. I'm Spencer Linton. <laughs> oh, he was a state champ at Bingham, a star at BYU. He's going to go down as one of the state's all-time greats. There's now almost a decade of history between BYU and Gonzaga. The Cougars win last night. Might go down as their best against the Zags. But don't let the recency bias yeah. get in the way here either, right? There have been several other fantastic finishes for the Cougars in this rivalry game, enough so that we've got a sports beat top five. Wing to Carlino. He loses Stockton. Drives into the lane up and in at the rim. 2014, the last time BYU beat Gonzaga in Provo before last night. Matt Carlino lifted the Cougs over the Bulldogs with 15 points in 31 minutes against a ranked team. Skyler Hoff is just with a hot hand right now with deep range. BYU beats number three ranked Gonzaga in 2015, 73 to 70. In their first win in Spokane, Kyle Collinsworth had 20 points. Corbin Kafusi had three key blocks before he switched full time to football. The Cougars led wire to wire at that one. Wilcher on the draw. Good one. 
BYU goes back to back in Spokane in 2016. BYU shot 17% for three, but they still found a way. Kyle Collins are with 20 and Nick Emery with that big bucket late to seal the win. And Goliath goes down. BYU wins it. For the first time in program history, BYU beat a number one ranked team in 2017. They ruined Gonzaga's perfect season. Newspapers were already printed that it read 30 and 0. Eric Mika had 29 points, 11 rebounds in the shocking upset. That's there, gets a strike. Burnett for three. I was there in Denver for this. Number one, of course, the 2011 NCAA Tournament second round. Jimmer and the Cougars smashed Gonzaga 89-67. He had 34 points in an 89-67 win. BYU's first Sweet 16 since 1981. All right, in College Hoops today, seventh-ranked Maryland at number 25, Ohio State. Terrapins down six, but cutting back in. Aaron Wiggins three, and Maryland down by three. The Buckeyes kept attacking the basket, though. C.J. Walker slips down the lane for the layup. Then Dwayne Washington cuts around the screen, gets the floater to go. Ohio State upsets Maryland 79 to 72. Stick in the Big Ten, Indiana on the NCAA tourney bubble, hosting ninth ranked Penn State. This is the Hoosiers, Trace Jackson Davis with the play of the game. Indiana with a much needed win for their tourney resume. Number 21, Butler, and number 15, Creighton. Creighton was on fire from downtown in the first half. 10 three-pointers for a 19-point halftime lead. Marcus Zagorowski hit five of those, and in the second half, he just kept knocking them down. He was 7-for-7 seven seven from three-point range, finished with 25 points, and Creighton got a big win, 81-59. to 16th-ranked Seton Hall hosting St. John's. They roll in this one, the player to watch for the Pirates. Sandro Mamukelechvili. Thank you. He turned this game into a dunk contest. 16 points and eight rebounds in the win. I'm going to say what? Hey, the Utah women's team was hosting 21st ranked Arizona State. Four Lady Utes scored in double figures, led by Andrea Torres and Brenda Maxwell, both with 15 points. And Utah wins 75 to 71. And the win over the rink. Well, do you believe the miracle on ice plus the best of the day in the NHL? That's all coming up after this. All right, it's championship season for Utah high school hoops. Four state titles were decided on Saturday. So let's start with the 3A boys championship game. Manti and Richfield at Salt Lake Community College. Morgan Albrecht, his best pistol Pete Maravich impersonation, puts the Wildcats up six at the half. But Manti, they came back fired up. Kevin Clark, that three puts the Templars up by five. Less than four minutes left, Connor Christensen, He's going to seal it and slam the door. Manti, your state champions. It was crazy, dude. The, just an adrenaline rush. Ooh, it was good. It was good. Just, just love them to death. They're, the, they're, they're awesome boys. Three a girls championship. Judge and South Severe. Less than five minutes left in the game. Emily Maloof for Judge hits the three, pushes the Bulldog lead to five. But the Rams don't quit. Kinsey Jones clutch cuts the lead to one. We've got 10 seconds left in the game. Cassie Johnson hits the jumper. That did it. That was the game winner. South Severe, you are state champs. It's always been a dream of mine because my parents won and now I get to win. And to hit the shot just really hits it home for me. That's what this team's done all year long. They found a way to win when it mattered. Love those championship moments. 2A boys final between Enterprise and Beaver. Beaver with the late lead. Enterprise not done, though. How about this? Three-pointer with less than 20 to go, cutting the lead to four. They've got a chance here, another three. But this one, no good. Beaver rebounds. They dribble it out the other way. Beaver's the state champs. 2A girls state championship took three overtimes to decide a champ. Miller to North Summit, second overtime. Miller's Riley Miller hits a three. They take a two-point lead, but North Summit answers on the other end to send it to a third overtime. In the third overtime, a terrible call decides the game. That was called with three seconds left. Miller buries both free throws to win the championship. Miller wins their second state title in three years. It took three overtimes to bring home the hard work. Cobra Penny, 25 and 13 in the win. Right up next, the best video of the week, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Plus, if you want to make some extra cash, practice your half court and full court shots. Trust us on this.
Here we go, the best videos of the week, and this one went viral. The first one is just nuts here, all right? Zach McWhorter had an unfortunate accident during practice pole vaulting. He's the one who posted the video. Uh, his dad was filming it, happens to be a urologist as well, so his dad was able to fix him with uh, some stitches there. It took 18 stitches to get all that uh, taken care of. You can't make that story up. George's Anthony Edwards, one of the best players in the country. He shows you why there. Whew. Hey, in that same game, Georgia for the win. Got it! Oh my. Hey, you gotta love some drama in the South. All right, they're called the Dayton Flyers for a reason. Flying through the air. Obi Toppin is a player to watch. Oh my God. If you aren't watching him already, oh. trust me on this one. Find a Dayton game on a Saturday or whenever they play next. And check this guy out. He's one of the best in the, in the country. My goodness. All right, now to half-court shots. This video, courtesy of the South Dakota State women's basketball team. This was impressive. They have a half-court shooting contest going on at practice. One make, two makes, three makes is on the way right here. Uh, no way. They're feeling it. Can, can we get a fourth one here? Can we get a fourth one? How about four? You know what? I don't think I could even make one you know maybe one in 20 shots they make four in a row and uh the pressure's on now because Sam, i'm not satisfied i want one more i have to have one more <laughs> this this girl here was even saying there's too much pressure on this she we'll better deliver how about five in a row jeremiah ah, yes yes way oh that's incredible good for them that's five awesome for five. all right this is a guy at montana state now $11,000 richer. Oh, my goodness. He buries a full court shot for that money. That'll buy a lot of cowboy boots, belt buckles, and Pat's blue ribbon. <laughs> well, how about this BYU student last night? $8,000 richer. You know what that's going to buy? A lot of ramen noodles. Oh, yeah. A lot of ice cream. And uh, high jumper right here is a little too good. Oh! <laughs> Dude! <laughs> Oh, man. The most the... underappreciated job in the NBA is the towel. Get line. out of the way. What are you doing oh. out there? Oh. You're fired. <laughs> Come on, man.